Hey, welcome back to another video of Launch Panel Slash DJing. I'm Ryan, or Launch Panel Slash DJ, if you will, whatever you want to call me. But in this video today, so as you've been, as you know, or if you've seen my channel regularly, as you know, like, I've been posting these visualizer videos with all these songs, and I've been doing this for a while, and I want to keep doing it because I was going to end it today, or I was going to end it, um, not today, but today that when I'm recording this video, I was going to end it today. But I wanted to end this kind of thing later on because I really like doing these, I really like posting these, and plus it gives me more things to do when I'm not recording or not uh, making launch pack covers, I can also post these, and plus they're really easy and fun to do. So yeah, I've been making these, and also, I've been getting con comments saying, like, people wanted to find out how to make these, and people wanted to learn how to make these, so I was like, okay, I'll make a video on it. So that's what today's video is going to be, and everything that you see in this video, to make, to make, like, my visualizers work, of what I do on, what I've been doing recently, really, um, has been Cascobi's Echoes and Output Manager. So that's what I've been doing. So please go check out his stuff. All of the links for everything I used <coughs> will be in the description. So if you want to do this yourself or follow along with me, everything will be in the description on what I use. And also go check out Cascobi's stuff because he is t t 2,000 times better than me. So let's get on with the video. Alright, so I just opened up Ableton Live 10 Suite is what I've been using for my visualizers. Usually what I use for my launchpad covers is uh, Ableton Live 10 Lite. So I've been using the Lite version for my covers and uh, Ableton Live 10 Suite for my visualizers. But anyway, so right now we have the software loaded up. Uh, let's tab it to get it to this main interface. And as you can see, there's four different uh, effects or there's four different... Um, categories uh, there's two midis and two audios you only need one midi and one audio for what we're going to do right now so we can delete uh one of the midis and one of the audios and now that we have that down the first thing you really want to do is start working on like the audio portion so like what song you're going to use and put in the right echo receivers and echo managers and things like that into the audio file so let's get on with that so the song that I'll be using for this little example that I'll be doing in this video is uh, Cave Town Fool, which is a really, it's like starts off slow, but then it has a nice little beat drop. So like it starts off this, all right. And then once it gets to like the beat drop area, I don't know where it is exactly. It gives me like a nice little cool beat. So I kind of like how that is. And um, now what you want to do is get the file wherever you store your files or wherever you get your music from and wherever your downloads are. Okay, now that you add it to Ableton, you want to add it to the audio track that you have in uh, the Ableton interface right now. So let's see how that's going. All right. So it's loaded up. Make sure the BPM is at the right BPM. So the song BPM for this song uh, is uh, 120, and the BPM for Ableton is 120. So you want to keep that especially the same because then your visualizer will look different. It will sound different, and you just don't want that to happen. And you want to have a clean song and a clean visualizer. So and then also I'll be explaining on how to do a clean visualizer and things like that. So let's get on to it. Okay, so I'm going to take these headphones off because one, they look kind of stupid on me, and two, I guess I'll need them for this next portion. Again, your preferences are different than mine, so you may be able to use your headphones on Ableton, but I don't really like using my headphones on Ableton. Anyway, so let's get started on adding the effects or adding the echo onto the audio. So first what you want to do is load up your file. So what I have for mine, I have a little folder called Ableton Plugins, and um... I have the folder inside for echo and what you want to do for the audio is the echo version 1.0.1 .1, the regular um, not the receiver one I don't know the input the transmitter the whatever you want to call it it's not the receiver you don't want to put that one the receiver will go into the MIDI and that receiver will control the light effects so the receiver is the one who's collecting the audio and then turning it into visual data anyway so we'll get on with that next in the uh, next portion of this video so first with the audio what you want to do is I can see when I play the music 
and it's going into it, it's reading it and you can see the audio levels and the input gain going up and also on the bottom here under like the frequency uh the frequency threshold meter uh you can just look under it and then you can see um like that's more like the low ends of the song so that's why there's not really much right now but if i were to go like more into the song and then play it you see like with more bass you'll get that bottom so if you want like a big bass in your video slides you, you will adjust that bottom if you want like a tall tall like really impacty um visualizer effect you put both the input gain and the bass gain up uh, or or just um i don't know what you call the bottom but anyway I'll, i'm gonna call that little bottom section the bass game right now so Whatever that's going to be, I'm sorry I have the music playing when I was talking, but whatever you want to call that, I'm going to call it the bass game, but again, this is up to your preferences also, so. Okay, so now what you want to do is open up your Ableton plugin file. Again, the same one for me is my Ableton plugin file, but you want to open up the Echo and then grab the Echo receiver and put that in the MIDI. So, you want to add it in the MIDI because what the MIDI is going to do is for like the lighting effect. So you can adjust like the color, you can adjust the angle of it, you can adjust the like position of it, you can adjust the center or default, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, just the MIDI is where you control the lights and the um, receive or, and the audio course is where you control the audio. So we can get that file out of the way, which I'm gonna close these out now. So let's open up to the MIDI and then as you can see right here, you have your little interface as the echo receiver on it and like I was saying, so you can go default, centered, and I'll go more in depth into that stuff in a minute. Just what I want to do is uh, right now get connected to a launch pad. So if you have a launch pad right now and if you're following along, I'll go get that right now. So I'm going to go get mine right now. Okay, so I just grabbed my other two launch pads because I do have three in the videos I have been posting are with three. But right now, I'll show you the setup for just one launch pad if you only have one. So what you want to do is get your launch pad. Plug that in, make sure it's on, make sure it's all connected, do the whole shebang, what you have to do to get it connected to yours, and uh, once it's connected, you can now go into your MIDI input, or your MIDI output, and then select your launch pad, select channel 6, depending on which launch pad you have, unless you're using the, the mini or the S. So, right now, put that in, in. So, I use it right now, already, we already have an effect going on the visualizer. But we do, but we do want to uh, uh, have it like more in detail. So right now, what I will be doing is I'm gonna continue holding up the launch pad as I do this because I don't really have a, another camera angle, which I do, but I don't need it right now. So what I like to do is the edges or turn the edges on because if you have a launch pad MK2, because what I'm showing you right now also works with the MK2. So for the edges, you want to turn that on because it makes all the edges of the lights turn on and it makes it look nicer of course same with the mk2 even though it doesn't have like this bottom rack and this side rack it still has the um it still has the left left what side is this on uh it still has the right rack that might still be wrong it still has this right rack and the top rack uh with this you can like start selecting your colors you can start selecting your um style of it and you can flip it you can rotate it things like that so Right now, this is. I'm gonna play this song right now. So right now, it's on default. If you see that, and what you wanna do is you wanna change it up a bit. You can do centered. And so now that's centered. But um, also, I'm gonna go back to default because it's kind of easier to show this next example on default. But if you wanted to go on flip, you can do. Uh, as you see on the screen, I'm gonna do flip horizontal, and that's now. It flipped it horizontal again, it's kind of like a show. Uh, I'm gonna flip it back. See, I flip back and vertical. So you can just mess with that stuff around on there if you wanted to do it like, like in different orientations. Because soon I will be posting like different orientation type uh, visualizers, so you'll see some more examples of that in the future. Uh, but I'm gonna switch it back to none. Same with rotation. So if you look at my screen right there on the bottom, uh, you can do you can rotate it 90. So automatically in default, it's going to start from the bottom. And uh, what you can do is rotate it to right here, rotate it to right here, rotate it to right here, and then back. 
So that's just another little orientation thing I can do on your Launchpad Pro MK2 or any of the Launchpads that are out there that you're doing this on. So I'm, again, I'm going to keep that on zero. And um, right now, again, you can choose what, any colors you want. Any of the colors you want. I will have a chart down below to a, uh, a um, like color chart spectrum thing that has all the velocities as, and as you know if you do launch pad stuff that velocities uh, means colors so the higher in the velocity you go the different colors you will have so say like um five or say you want a red red will be five and then uh, so on and so forth. I'm just saying like little examples, but uh, I will have a link to the description on this file that I'll show you right in a second, right now. So if you want to use this file, you can. I'll have it in the description, but as you can see, it has all 127 because there's only 127 velocities I can use. But it has all the colors on it with all the numbers, so it's easy to use and it's really fun. So. If you want to use this again, it will be in the link in the description and feel free. Go ahead and close that out if you already know what colors you want to do. So I'm going to do a quick time lapse and choose my colors and do however I want to do it. So timeless mode now. So now that you have all the colors that you want, now what you can do so. If you look at mine right now, yours should look like this if you have a Launchpad Pro and a Launchpad MK2. I don't really know about the Launchpad Mini or S, but I'm sure it's going to look the same also. Right now, I'm going to start this. So you see that it goes all the way to the top, but this top rack is not on. So what I am going to do to show you like a little example of that is um, the Output Manager. So the Output Manager will be the one that controls uh, more of the outside stuff. So the stuff that usually isn't covered. So what you want to do is open up your file that you keep all your Ableton extensions in or Ableton plugins and go into here. See, I have Output Manager and you want to add on to the MIDI effect rack, not the not the audio because that's a whole different other thing, but add it to the MIDI and then select your launch pad on the bottom. Since I have a Pro, I selected the Pro. But now once I play the music, so now, that's, so now let's go into the top light. So that's what you want to happen and that's that will just make it look better it makes it look nicer and plus it get it hides the uh, user mode light so that's also a little another little good thing to know a little good technique to make your visualizers look cleaner so anyway now you can start on kind of like tweaking and making things more fine-tuned and um adding two more launch pads that I use so like I use three and this will also work on two so if you have two and want to do this this will work the same way but I will use three and I'll use three as the example but really so what I do if you notice I do two and then on the outside one I copy and pasted it onto the the other outside one and then just flip it so those two are doing copies and then the middle ones doing the vocals so like the outside is the bass and the middle is the vocals and so on and so forth. So, what you want to get do in and get started because I almost messed up my sentence because I'm reading my teleprompter. But what you want to do is grab your little launch pad. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so as you can see, I have my other two launch pad MK2s now. So I'm gonna set these down, put them on my desk the way I want them, and I uh, put that one right there. So now that you have two, now what you want to do is copy and paste the uh, <clears throat> MIDI's the MIDI effect rack, you want to copy and paste that according to how many launch pads you have. So if you have two, you only want to copy it one time to um, just have two MIDI effect racks. But if I, since I have three and if you're doing three, I'm going to copy it two times and I have three MIDI effect racks. So you just want to have as many MIDI effect racks as you have launch pads. So that's a good little thing to remember also. So right now I'm going to make my third one. It may take a little bit of time depending on how good your laptop is. So my laptop isn't great, but it's good for what I'm doing. So right now, if you see like a little bit glitches, it might be because my laptop isn't as strong enough. But if you have a stronger laptop, then this will work a lot smoother for you. Or if you even use a computer, it will work a lot smoother for you. So let's head back to the computer screen. Right now I have my Launchpad 2 or MK2, I'm sorry, uh, loaded up. And I'm going to also connect my second one, which actually for for examples right now, I'll just disconnect my 
second one and then we can only have the one right now so i don't really need this one we can move it down and then i'll i'll bring back later i'm just doing this so i can have like optimal performance when i'm showing you guys this so right now what i want to show is that when i have ah, uh, when i have both these launch pads then i'll have Talking both the same thing. So this is really hard, I'm sorry, but I can see they're kind of they copying the exact same thing. So what you want to do to change that up is now add to the audio effect another echo. So the first thing that we do with the audio, you want to add another thing to that. Um so like with me, I'm gonna open up my my uh, folder that I have, my Ableton plugins, and then open up my file that I have for my echo and then the echo version 1.0.1 .1, not the receiver but the other the other one from the receiver you want to add another one to that so right here and you see that I have both the echoes open so what you want to do is look down and look at the little ones on top as you can select the little ones so those are your identification numbers so those are saying like echo one is going to if you open up your MIDI, it goes to Echo 1 Receiver 1. So if you change that uh, to 2, you can change it to 2 or however many launch pads uh, you want to control individually. So these are just saying that you're controlling these individually. So you want to go to your your second MIDI effector. I can change that to 2 and click Enter to confirm it. So now this, this outside one is now controlling my MK2. And number 1 is controlling my inside uh, um, launch pad Pro because... If you see my videos, like my Launchpad Pro is on the inside, and then I have the MK2 on the outside, uh, and then I have my other one on the other side of the Launchpad Pro. So, what you want to do is st now start off with the. I think okay, it's kind of up to you after this point because um, what you want to do is assign whatever Launchpad you want to be like your inside one or your outside one, or one that has like the most bass and one that has like the less bass. So you want to do that. On depending on how your preferences are but so for my launchpad pro it's going to be number one and for my mk2 it's going to be uh, the second echo so right now we can work on the uh, the launchpad mk2 and that was going to be number two for me but if you have it for number one you can do the same so right now let's go to echo receiver number two the second one so the identification would say two and then also make sure that your MK2 or whatever your launch pad or your second one is going to be. And so, so if you look in the top of the frequency uh, threshold meter, uh, you will see like band 1. And then it has a little drop down and it says band 2, band 3, band 4, so on and so forth till 8. Because there's 8 bands. Since there's 8 buttons, each row is a band. Or each column, I should say, is a band. And each each one of these in each row will be one band so like I believe it starts on this side it goes band 1 band 2 band 3 band 4 band 5 so on and so forth till 8 and um what you want to do is now adjust it so like if you want more bass on the MK2s and you do that for the MK2s and if you want more um, vocal for like your Launchpad Pro or your middle one whatever that's going to be you can have it for the middle. This is just letting you individually uh, like tell your Launchpad uh, hey have this bass on this one and vocals on this one or if you want both have both. So right now I'm going to load up a file that you guys can also use. Um, which I have in the description for it, like a little mock-up file, but it will have all the band maximum frequencies. So if you wanted bass, you have bass on one. If you wanted vocals, you have vocals on the other one. So I'm going to load that up right now. Okay, so I have my Google Doc loaded up on all the max frequency numbers, which I'll have this also in the description. It'll just be a part of the description. It's not going to be like a file or a link or anything. But you'll see this in the description if you scroll down or look at it. And... I can see for Echo 1, it goes from 100 hertz to two to 20 hertz. I'm sorry, I cannot talk today. And for 2, it goes to 1.31 hertz to 20 hertz. So now what you want to do is have that file open and have whatever you have to look at on there. But I'm going to use my phone to look at my docs. But also, we just hit 800 subscribers right now. So what I'm going to do is look at my 800 subscriber. His name is Killer Nation, so please go check him out. Um, if you want to see 
his content i don't know he posts but i just saw this right now i hit 800 subscriber thank you so much to everybody who subscribes and likes my channel and if you want to see more of your favorite content comment down below on what you like and comment down below on your favorite song and i will be doing your songs too and i will be making like launchpad covers to your songs and visualizes to your songs so thank you so much to everybody i cannot believe i made it to 800 i can't believe like how much i made it now but to 800 that's insane just thank you so much anyway let's get back to the video um which i'm going to reply to this comment real quick so hang on all right so i just replied to his comment which and if you guys know and if you comment on videos i comment like or I reply and like and heart your comment on every single comment. I do it to every comment and if I missed one of yours, I'm sorry and I will always go back and check. It might be a little bit after but I will always like, heart and reply to my comments. So thank you so much to everybody and let's get back to the regular stuff. Alright, so I just have my notes loaded up right here and also so this takes a little bit of time to put all the numbers in, so I'm going to throw the numbers up right now onto the screen. And I'm going to do a time lapse of me doing uh, all of the second ones, and uh, then I'll stop. I'll show you guys what I did, and then I'll go into the, the next one, and then I'll time lapse again, so on and so forth. So start the time lapse now. Okay, so now that I just finished putting in all the numbers, so as you can see on the screen still, that these are all the numbers that I put in for band 1 through 8, and then also, uh, like, the right amount of gigahertz. So, so I'm going to grab the camera real quick, and so if you see my launch pads, and then, hang on, I'm sorry, I just zoomed in, and um, if you see this, However you want it, then uh, you can adjust it to how it is. So, so now we just finished doing the MK2. Um, we can now work on the Launchpad Pro or your Echo 1. Whatever your Echo 1 is, um, or your two, whichever one that you put that for, reminds Echo One. And so this one's going to work for the Launchpad Pro. So now, um, this one's a lot easier. I'm not going to do a time lapse after all because it's just the default. You just drag it in and it works immediately. So you don't have to do anything for that one. Just I like to sometimes tweak it up. So you can do what you want, but the default version works. So let's just start it. <laughs> Okay, so what I did, if you were watching my, so I put the band 2 on 3.10. Again, this is going to be different for the songs, which that will work perfectly fine default. Just, uh, I like to tweak things up, and I put mine at 310 uh, for the max frequency on band 2. And then also I adjusted the bass. So for this one, so it has a uh, more bass on this end, and like once it hits like the bass line. Bam. Then it goes up and does more uh, with uh, the bass and it looks like more punctured like I was saying in the beginning. So now that we have that one done and uh, now that we have our Launchpad Pro the way we want it and our Launchpad MK2 on the way that we want it. Now if you, this is what will come into when you have three. So right now I'm going to have my uh, third one uh, connect right now. Alright, so I just connected my third launch pad right here, which I will show you right in a second. Okay, so you can see like the configuration I have on my launch pads. So now if we play the audio, see now this one isn't connected, which I will then explain in a second. These two right now work. And then whenever you hear like the um, like little bass drop right now, you can see this one goes up and then this one also has like more of the vocals. This one has the so go back to the face cam right now. 
Okay, so now that we're back on the face cam and I'm back on the screen, um, <clears throat> now we can connect it to our third launch pad. And if you have a second one, you're done. Like, if you only have two, and if you only have one, you could have stopped earlier. But right now, it's back to you have three. So if you want to do a triple launch pad, um, so if you have like an outside one, or if you have the one on the outside, like for me, I have my MK, my MK2. Both my MK2s on the outside is my Launchpad Pro on the inside. So you want to now select your outside MIDI effect rack and copy and paste that one. So now that you have that one copy and pasted, um, <clears throat> and this one, you now want to assign it to your other Launchpad, of course. So now your output is for the other Launchpad. And so now, um, since the other one is just copied from the one that you copied it from, it's going to be in like the same orientation. So you want to go and flip it back to the correct way as you just saw me and I'll show you the final product. Alright, so now that you saw that, and now yours should be relatively like that, and if you followed all the way through, I hope yours looks like that. I hope I didn't do a bad job like explaining things, but if you do have any other um, questions, concerns, just comment down below. <coughs> like I said, I read all my comments, I reply, I like them, I heart them. I always want to keep communicating with you guys. I like talking with my fans. I like talking to people who like my stuff. So if you have any more questions, just let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to, to help you and I hope you enjoy it. And you will see like the full version of this um, as a launch pad visualizer sometime during the week. And I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next video whenever I do another one like this. Bye!